Hey everyone, Singleton Sean here, and today we're going to be setting up the .NET Core generic host in Simple Trader. So what is the generic host? Well, it's basically just an object that's going to take care of our application resources. So it's going to take care of dependency injection, which we already have set up here, configuration from, say, an app settings config file, or even from environment variables, and it can also take care of logging and many more things. But anyways, we're going to set that up. And the main reason I really want to set it up is because right now with our Simple Trader DB Context Factory, we have a hard coded connection string here. And ideally, I would want to load this from a configuration and pass it into this class instead of hard coding it. And that's pretty easy to do. I mean, we could just set up a constructor here and take in a connection string. But then whenever we want to do migrations, it's not going to work because it's not going to know how to load that connection string unless we do some kind of funky workarounds. So instead we can use a generic host and it's going to know how to get that connection string from our config and apply those migrations. So that's the main goal here. All right, so let's hop right in here. And the first thing we want to do is come to our project and we're going to have to add some NuGet packages. So let's search for hosting and we want to get the Microsoft extensions hosting. Let's get that. We'll just get the latest version and that should be everything we need. So right up here we can define our host and there we go. So now we need to actually just set this and that's going to occur in our app constructor. So we can set our host and the way we set this is going to be important. So we can't just build our host right here with create default builder and then eventually build. We can't actually do that if we want to use our host for Entity Framework migration. So what we need to actually do is set up a public static method right here that's going to give us back our host builder and we call this create host builder and it takes in an array of string args. And this is important because Entity Framework migrations will actually look for this method so it's very important that you define this like this and make it static if you want your migrations to work. I'm not sure if it needs to be like within your app or maybe it has to be within your default namespace, but we're just gonna put it here to be safe and we know it'll work. But feel free to test out putting it somewhere else in your application. All right, so right off the bat, we can get rid of this and we're gonna use our create host builder method. And we don't actually have any string args, so we're just gonna give this a default argument of null and then we are just going to build it. All right, perfect. So now we just need to configure our host builder in here. So same thing that I kind of previewed up here, we're going to return our host create default builder. And that's going to take those args that we pass into this method. So let's configure services. And this will take a callback with our service collection. And let's open that up. And what I'm going to do is just copy all of my services into here. So let's go ahead and grab all these. There we go. And plop that in there. So we are on our way to configuring this. Let me actually rename this to services. That's a little bit better. And let's get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. And here we go. We got our basic host set up and we have it available in our app. So let's come down here to our one startup and let's actually use the host. So we can get rid of this method. We don't have that anymore. And now we need to get our required main window from our service provider. We can use our host to do that. So we can take our host, get the services, and now we can get our main window. But before we do that, we need to actually start our host. And you can actually start this asynchronously. There's a start async, but we're just gonna start it synchronously. This is a void method. I mean, I could make it async void and start async. But I feel comfortable starting it synchronously because it's just the startup method. And of course, we're starting the host. We also need to stop it as well. So we can override an on exit for our app. So whenever we close out of the app, we are going to take our host and stop it. And there's not actually a synchronous stop. So we are going to have to make this an async void, which is OK. And once we stop, we need to dispose of our host as well and we need to await this. So very simple, all we're doing is creating our host right here, and then we start it, get the services we need, and then when we close out of the application, we stop the host. So let's see this in action. 
Alright, so we start our host. I'll just continue this. And there we go. We get our main window from our services. So it looks like our host is working and we are configuring our services. But like I said, there's more you can do with the host. So another thing I want to do is configure app configuration. And this is where we can set up a configuration file. So let's just set up a callback here and we'll open that up and we can add a JSON file and usually this is called app settings.json and we need to actually create one of these so let's go over here to our app we already have an app config but we're gonna replace this with an app settings.json because I feel like app.config is kinda of like the old way to do it the new way to do it with .NET Core is with your app settings.json of course there's nothing wrong with the app.config but we're trying to be hip so let's go ahead and add a new app settings.json here so there we go and I guess I should have actually selected the JSON type of file instead of selecting class but that's no big deal we can just get rid of all that and let's open up some brackets and start configuring things so the first thing I want to do is get my NED framework connection string in here so we can set up a section called connection strings and actually since this is called connection strings configuration for the host is actually going to recognize this by default and put all of the properties we put in here into a connection strings property on our configuration we'll see that in a second but let's just throw our connection string in here so we'll call this default and let's just get that I think it's still in this DB context factory there we go plop that in the app settings.json so we're gonna add that JSON file but now I want to actually get values from this configuration after we configure and we can do that in this configure services by changing this callback to also take a context and then our services and this context is our host builder context and we can get files from this configuration we just set up so let's get our connection string get that down here context we can take our context and then on here we have configuration and that's going to have the values from this JSON file that we added. As I was talking about, we can just use git connection string. And as you can see, that's shorthand for the section connection strings, which we did name correctly right there. So we can grab any of these values. So let's git connection string, and our name is default. Now we're ready to actually update this constructor to take a connection string. So let's add a field for that connection string, and then highlight all that generate a constructor and actually this doesn't even need to be a design time DB context factory anymore because we're not even going to use it for migrations we're just going to be able to do that through our host so we don't need this at all either let's pass in that connection string we need to actually register an instance of our DB context factory so that we can pass in this connection string right here so let's just throw that in there oh my god we got a huge problem here and that is it cannot find our configuration file so why is that well very simple we need to actually tell our project to copy this file to our output directory when we build so we can do copy if newer there we go much better look at our connection string perfect so everything is going well our application is where it was before except we're using our host and we're also not hard coding our connection string but now, the main goal of this was to get migrations also working. So how are we going to do that? As we recall, the Entity Framework Core tools actually look for this method, and then they'll use the host that we configure in all this. But they're also looking for a DB context to be registered with our services. So we need to actually register one. And we can do that with add DB context. That's what the Entity Framework tools are going to be looking for. We need to pass in the type of our context. And then inside of here, we can actually configure our DB context. And we want to use SQL Server, and we want to use our connection string as well. Now we're ready to actually run migrations. So I always screw this up. I think my default project needs to be where my DB context is. And then we need to add migration. We'll just call this test. And it's going to tell us our startup project doesn't reference Microsoft Entity Framework Core Design. So we do actually need to add this package. So let's go into our NuGet packages. And I think we can just search for design. There we go, let's install that. And it still says we don't have the package. Maybe we need to build this or something. 
There we go, after building it worked, but whoa, we're getting an exception. How do you guys think that we solved this? Well, if I go into my NuGet packages, I guess one thing we could try is just updating all of our packages. Maybe that'll work. I mean, sometimes stuff like this works, but I mean, we're kind of just taking a shot in the dark. Maybe it'll work. And oh my gosh, it worked. Who would have thought? So yeah, just update your packages. Everything should be good. And before I run these migrations, I'm actually just going to delete this one that we just did so we can do mi remove migration. So yeah, add migration works. Now let's try updating the database. And before I do that, I'm actually just going to delete my database. Obviously, don't delete your database if you have a lot of information in it and you're not comfortable with deleting it. But in this case, I do want to delete it and just show off updating the database. And now we can do update database and that's going to apply all of our migrations against the database that we have set up in our connection string. Awesome, there we go. It's doing all the work. If we come back into here and do a little refresh, there's our database. So the migrations are working perfectly. Now, another thing you can do for this app configuration is you can add environment variables. And that's going to allow us to get environment variables from this configuration. So I actually put my finance API key into my environment variables. So I can get that key by just doing context, take my configuration and get value. And this generic, we need a string as the value. And I name my environment variable finance API key. Now, if you guys want to add your API key to your configuration and you don't feel like putting it in environment variables, feel free to just add it to your app settings.json. So to match this get value, you would just put it right here, finance API key, and then just put your key right here as the value. But mine's in my environment variables, and I'm going to leave it there because I actually want to check in this file, and I don't want you guys stealing my API key. Another thing I want to point out is that we add our DB context right here, but we don't actually resolve our DB context anywhere in our application. We use our DB context factory. So that's just something I want to point out that this is strictly for migrations. Anyways, that is the .NET Core host in a WPF application. Very simple to set up. So we create our host builder in this static method. Again, this signature is important for Entity Framework Core tools and migrations. And then we build our host, put it in this variable, and when our application starts, obviously we start the host, get the service we need, and when we close the application, we stop the host and dispose it. And I'm sure there's many more things you can do with the host, but this is enough for now. Maybe we'll come back here later and, of course, add logging. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Peace out, guys.